<laughs> oh, man. Woo-hoo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Good live tonight. Good live tonight. Make sure you guys go and check out Fit Lady Trucker. Uh, make sure you guys check that video. Great episode. Um, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna talk much about it because it's a good episode and you really need to go and watch it. So do that for me. And when you step up in the building. Make sure you hit the like button so many other people can like that, too. All right. So you guys ready for today's commentary right quick? I mean, I I really had to dig into the books to come up with one, even though today probably would have made for a good commentary, especially what happened to me. But it was like, nah, I got I got to stick to the script, you know. I was going to talk about this video that I saw this lady fight the McDonald's employee. I was going to talk about that. Hey, get out! Touch me! Are you crazy? Okay, don't touch me! Touch me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! I was like, no, it's not. A, it don't have nothing to do with trucking. Then I saw another video with a truck driver spinning around. The nigga blew through. The nigga blowing through in a semi, nigga. <laughs> Only in the land. Yeah. Yeah, this nigga big wildin'. Yeah, nigga. This what my city do. This the land, nigga. This the land, baby. Only in the land, niggas do donuts. Only in the land where niggas do donuts and semis, nigga. No, that's alright. That's a little. Niggas doing donuts and semis. Uh, doing crazy shit in Cleveland, but it was only a 20 second clip. And, you know, my commentaries usually last for about maybe about a half an hour, you know, or at least I try to I try to keep a time limit on it. But if you want to know what today's commentary is, you guys stay tuned. Let's do it. Ryan Little. <laughs> Why do I always got to scratch my back before I get into a commentary? I don't get it. <laughs> back scratcher. Never leave home without it. <laughs> hey, guys, what's going on? Lockout men back again with another commentary for you guys. And in this commentary, we, we, we always talk about something, something, something trucking related. You know what I'm saying? So 
let's just jump right in to today's commentary and it comes from this post right here good sunday morning everyone as the owner of 250 truck fleet i was wondering if anyone had any good suggestions as to how can we find more good drivers i continually see more I continually see most talking about swapping from one mega carrier to the next. So how do us smaller fleets compete for the good drivers? We currently have drivers that live in various states throughout the United States and we get them home when they want. Any positive suggestions would be greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance. <laughs> Well, looky here, I, I am definitely not an owner operator. I am a company driver, but I see where you I, I see where you going with that, because I talk to many owner operators and small fleet operators. And the main question is, how can you get and keep good drivers? Now. As me, I, I consider myself a good driver. And I figure the way to keep me happy is to make sure that the money is right. Don't mess with the money. And home time. If I want to get home, if I want to get home or be somewhere, make it possible to get me there. To keep me happy is to keep me running. You know, don't don't have me to sit, you know, and wait for loads hours at a time. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's that's wasting my clock, especially if I start it. Like if I start my clock to un get unloaded at one place, I don't want to sit for two, three hours until you finally get me another load and get me running late that's not gonna make me happy keep me in a awesome equipment if something goes wrong with that equipment i bring it up to the shop you fix it and get me back on the road within a decent time now if if i had to put my truck in the shop pay me okay pay me for the downtime that I had to wait for the truck to get fixed. Now, don't turn around and be like, oh, okay, well, you know, for breakdown pay, it's like a, you, you had to give us a couple of hours and then after a couple of hours, we'll pay you. No, don't do that. If I put that truck in the shop and I got to wait a couple of hours, that's a couple of hours of my time that I could be using on the road and I'm not getting paid. You got to pay me. All right. You, you, you got to you got to pay me for that now to keep me happy, to keep me productive. You got to pay me. If I'm if the, the layover is like convoluted right now, you, in order to get layover pay, it has to be 24 hours from the time. That uh, that you're sitting. So if you're 18 hours and whatever you you get unloaded within 18 hours, you you don't get paid because it wasn't 24 hours. No, no. Uh -uh. If I'm sitting for whatever time, pay me. OK. Detention. We know that in the trucking industry, we got to give up two hours and I to this very day, I still do not understand why a truck driver has to give up two hours of his time for detention to start. I don't get that. I don't get that. I, I think that when a driver gets that dock and he's still sitting within uh, what? Two three four five hours 
he should get the total time that when he got there and until he leaves, not two hours to to the company for free. I don't have nothing to do with. I, look, listen, I, I don't have nothing to do with. With the negotiations between you and my company for your load, I don't have nothing to do with that. My job is to get it there, get it there on time. And if I get it there on time and you guys hold me up, why should I give you two hours of my time to unload me? And you still unloading me after that. Pay me from the time that I get there and until, until the time I leave. Is it five hours? Pay me five hours. If it's 10 hours, Pay me 10 hours. I got it there on time. I'm just saying, pay me. All right. Now, I'm not an owner operator, you know, and, and I'm not sure if I have any aspirations into becoming an owner operator for a truck, but I was an entrepreneur and an owner operator of different businesses. And I have known and seen how hard it is to get good people to work for you. Now driving a truck, you trying to get somebody to drive your truck for 10 hours a day. And you, you need somebody to drive that truck the way you want it to be driven. I understand that. I I I understand that. You know, I I work for owner operator that's uh you know that that cares about where his trucks is at or how his trucks is being ran. You know what I'm saying? So, I I tend to understand that. You want a driver that's going to that that you want a driver to be a mirror of you. You want him to take care of your truck, period. You know, you want him to, you, you want that, you want that driver to keep the truck clean whenever possible. You want him to make sure that he drives that truck safe, just like you would drive that truck safe. And you ask the question, why is it hard to, to, to retain these drivers? Well, you, you got some drivers that just, you know, that just don't care. You got drivers out here that don't see your vision. You got drivers out here that are skeevy, envious of you. They see, they, they trying to count, calculate what's in your pocket instead of worrying about what you putting in theirs. They want to know why you getting paid uh uh the big bucks and and i'm getting small change i'm getting 32 cent a mile i'm getting 35 cent a mile now see see what these mega carriers you see how they can get over they could get over because they self-insured so they could put any time dick or harry or some i don't give a fuck type driver in their trucks and they and and they can be like, oh well, fuck this company. I'm about to fuck up their truck or or abandon their truck. Don't you know? For a small company, uh, a a one man a a one man operation, how much of a hit that will be if that potential driver happens to leave his truck somewhere and he has to go and pick it up. You know how you know how he has to take a hit on the load if the if if it's loaded or whatever. It ain't like he could just turn around and say, "Hey, let me hurry up and get uh, Sam to go out there and get that truck and drop that load." This like a uh, a mega carrier could do that. Hey, you're sitting. Let me go ahead and send you to recover this load right quick. Go and grab that for us. It's hard for an owner operator to do that, especially if his truck is somewhere in Timbuk fucking too. You know, I remember I was in the Zello group and uh, Prince Star, I remember that's his name. Somebody 
he hired he, he hired somebody to drive his truck and his truck was abandoned he ain't even know where his truck was at so what he did he got together with the guys on zello and we all came together to put eyes on his truck his truck was parked in a hotel parking lot somewhere in houston texas Now, the load that was supposed to be dropped, the load was supposed to be dropped days ago. So now he's losing. He he probably lost the account. You know, because you're a sm you, you're a small guy, you're not you're not a big mega carrier. You're a small guy. So he probably lost the account. He lost time on the truck. And he lost money. He, he, he had to spend additional money to get his truck towed because it was in a, it, 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 it might have been, you know, it was, it was where it was at. He had to get his truck towed. Now he had to turn around, find somebody else, get them down to Houston, Texas, put them in a truck so they can perk potential potentially drop the load or deliver the load and get his truck back up to him uh which i believe he was in virginia if i'm not mistaken i'm not sure where prince is at georgia somewhere i'm not sure where prince was at i, I know I, it, it had to come back up somewhere crazy right now here now here you are uh the owner of 250 trucks and you asking the question, how to get the good, how to find good drivers, how to find and keep good drivers. The best advice I would think is to offer higher pay than what your competitors is offering. Sometimes that's hard to do because you're a small company. And it's kind of hard to compete with the mega carriers. <clears throat> maybe, just maybe you can, but it's not always feasible. You always got to find that particular driver that will look that that will look at you and say, okay, I see the potential of where this company is going. I'll come on and help you out and help you grow the company. And if you can find a driver that do that, then that will probably be a good driver to keep. All right. Um, here's a couple of suggestions. Um, no unpaid downtime. If again, if the truck breaks down, you need, I, I need to get paid. Right. I need to get paid. If the truck breaks down and let's say on the on the road. Put me up in a hotel. Or, or. I will pay for the hotel and just reimburse me. That's all inverters for the trucks. Don't make the driver pay for the inverter. I that that's what happened to me. I, I, I came into the company and the company was like, yo, we'll we'll pay you for an inverter. I mean, no, we you had to pay for the inverter to be installed in the truck. OK, so if I leave your company and I don't go back in trucking, what's the per what's what's what good that inverter going to do me? <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Pay for parking. All right. And wonder why I say that, because parking is is the issue for us right now. You know, we get in we get into the pilot and uh, and the uh, flying J's and the uh, and the uh, what's that? The petrols. And we got to pay for parking. Why should we pay out of our pockets for a company truck that we drive? We should get the receipt, put the receipt into the envelope and either we get reimbursed or, 
you you give us a comm check to pay for the parking. It's your truck. That's a good question to ask too. Find out uh, if they pay for parking. Respect is another thing. All right. Respect is another thing. Respect the driver. Respect his his uh respect him as a driver. You know, again, if he wants if if he wants to go home, send him home. When he needs to go home, pay him a decent wage. Now, some companies is flipping the script to going salary. All right? Make sure that salary it's a good salary that he can live off of. Save a couple of dollars, pay his bills, and still live comfortably. Now I know uh for for a small fleet, for a small fleet owner or owner operator that still finds it hard to find good drivers out here, you gotta understand that drivers are being bombarded with Drivers are being bombarded with cold calls every day from different recruiters trying to recruit them, you know? So is that to say, is that the reason why you can't, you know, you can't find good drivers because of that? But then that's the reason why all recruiters can't find good drivers because the good, I guess they could, I guess you could say that the good drivers are being whisked away. You know? I mean, if a company calls you up and say, hey, I'm going to give you 50 cent a mile. But another company calls you up and say, hey, I'm going to give you 55 cent a mile. Which one, which one of those companies is going to get that driver? The one that's paying 55 cent a mile. You know, you can figure out a good driver simply just by talking to him and and see what he's looking for. You know, see what he's looking for. Say, hey, uh, good driver, what, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for a decent wage, good home time, and a good equipment. If you can give me all of that, then... Also, the respect that I deserve, then I could be that good driver for you. Dispatchers is is going to be another uh, thing that you know good drivers is looking you know is looking to see if they can work with their dispatchers. All right, if you put that good driver with a messed up dispatcher, then I can guarantee you that. The time with the company is not going to be that great. All right. The dispatcher has to respect the driver. Okay. Now, let's say if you put put that good driver with a dispatcher that don't know nothing about that don't know nothing about driving and just, you know, just totally disrespects you and be like, oh, well, you can get it there. You know, you're not doing this right or or I need you to do this, that and the third. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm the captain of this ship. I'm the captain of this truck. I'm the driver of this truck. I know how the hours of service work. I know that I got eight, uh, 10 hours to drive, 14 hours of on duty time. I trip plan every day. I give you an ETA of what time I could be there and keep you updated on the issues throughout the day if I can't make it. Don't force me to do something that I know that I can't do. All right? That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm I'm the good driver. I want to continue to be the good driver. My C, my CSA scores is on point. My driver's license is clean, and I would like to keep it that way. So don't force me to do something that would jeopardize my CDL. Dispatcher. Now, on the flip side of that, good driver needs a good dispatcher to keep him running and making money. 
Now, when that dispatcher starts messing with the money, then that's a problem. That's a problem. If I'm if I'm able to do 3000 miles a week, route me in such to get me 3000 miles a week. Don't turn around and be like, oh, OK, I can only get you uh, 1800 miles a week. No, bro. If it's 1,800 miles a week that you can only get me, then I need another dispatcher. I get paid by the mile, not by the hour. <laughs> I get paid by the mile. And if you're giving me in the upwards of 57 cents a mile or, or close to 60, that's equivalent to nothing. Because 3,000 plus miles would get me into the into the 1500 zone, 1600 zone, 1700 zone, 1800 miles ain't going to do nothing but keep me in the, in the low zone. All right. If you're able to do that dispatcher, that'll keep me happy. Keep this good driver happy. All right. Good drivers. They are hard to find, but another thing too, OK, before we get on up out of here and we know that good drivers are hard to find. But another thing, when you find the good drivers, make sure you're able to keep them. Because they are hard to come by. It's like it's like LeBron James. You only get one every every so often. <laughs> So you only get that one driver every so often. And when you get him, make, keep him happy. Keep him happy. Maybe with bonuses, maybe with accolades, maybe with good equipment, maybe with something. But once you get a, but once you get a good driver, definitely you're going to want to keep him. All right. Well, that's going to do it, everybody, for tonight's commentary. Thank you for being here. If you made it this far, why not hit that like button? You know what I'm saying? It's free. Hit that. If you like comment, if you like the commentary and everything else that I bring to this channel, consider joining. You know, consider joining. Become a member. You know what I'm saying? Get a brother man some coffee. You know, I need tea, hot tea every day. That's trying to clear up this chest. You know what I'm saying? So for you guys, I, I bring it, I, I bring it to you guys and I appreciate you guys giving me the support, <coughs> excuse me, giving me the support. I really do appreciate it until next time, everybody y'all stay up and all that good stuff. I will come back at you with another one. Peace. Brian Little. <laughs>